Hello, my name is Drew Burris and welcome to Pandemic PE. The session today is hopefully going to help you think of some ideas that you can use with your students if you're in person this year or as well as if you're virtual. Uh, a quick bio on myself, this is my 10th year teaching. I teach pre-K through second grade PE. I'm at Ridgeview Elementary in Warrensburg, Missouri. Been published on PE Central, the Great Activities Magazine, and the Games Gazette, which is a new magazine that just came out. 2015 Star of the Classroom. This is my sixth time presenting for Mo Shape. 2016 CTA Teacher of the Year. And finally, the 2018 West Central District Elementary PE Teacher of the Year. My Twitter handle is at Project Phys Ed. My email is aburris at warrensburgr6.org. And my website is projectphyzed.weebly.com. I'm glad you're attending today, so let's go ahead and dive on into it. Some tags. You're going to see a lot of tags today. So if you see something that you like, make sure that you tweet out today at Project Phys Ed, at MoShape1, hashtag Pandemic PE, or hashtag MoShape20. All right, so the biggest thing, 2020. Huh? This was something that probably no one's seen. Um, a janitor at my school told me back at the end of February that he knew some people in the St. Louis uh, school district that had been shutting down. And they told him, you know, within a couple of weeks, you'll be next. And when he told me that, I thought, nah, I just you know, blow it off. It ain't going to happen. Um, turns out he was right. Uh, March 15th, uh, we were let out. We were getting ready to be on spring break, and they shut the school down due to COVID. And the biggest question that I have is, were you prepared? I wasn't. Uh, this was kind of just a like, okay, schools closed, and you know, you wake up the next morning like, well, what do I do? Um, they gave us about a week to get prepared. Uh, for my department, I had to make paper materials and stuff for students. I put stuff up on our Facebook website to kind of give them an idea. You know, the thing was not everybody has internet. So it was a little bit of a challenge for students to see things to do. Um, you know, what were some things that you did for your class last spring? There's all kinds of different things. Uh, like I mentioned, paper materials, uh, stuff through social media, um, we had parents come to the school to pick up things for them. It was it's something that you know we never thought was going to happen, and it's still kind of you know awkward toward this day. So you know my next question is, what type of PE are you running now? Are you in person, virtual, hybrid? Uh, for my school district, we are. 50-50, we have students who are in person, and then we have students who are virtual, and they have the option uh, they have the option to choose which one they wanted. But when January comes around, uh, they are to come back in person. So that's the rule for now. Some of you might be hybrid. Some students come in on certain days of the week, and then they are online. So there's, there's many types of different options that are going around for this year. All right, let's get to the help me part. You know, like I mentioned before, the purpose of this session is to help you with activities you can do with your students uh, while back in person for school and some activities you can do for your virtual students at home. I know it's a bit of a challenge for the students at home who are virtual because um, they probably won't have a, you know, anything at home they could use, but you know, as your job as an educator, you must think of some ways that they can somehow come up with uh, different strategies of doing the lesson. In the past couple of years for most shape, I've usually done an active lesson, but I, today I'm gonna supply you with some pictures and videos from my students and others that have done the activities. If you were one of the few that got the chance, you know, welcome back. I, I know your students have probably missed you terribly, but, you know, when we hear welcome back, it's not going to be a regular school year. It's going to be totally different from 
what it's been in the past. So we're all just thinking, you know, what's it going to be like? What are some things we can and can't do? So, you know, it was like, what's going on now? Uh, um, I did, uh, if you don't watch me on Twitter, uh, I love making videos. And when the announcement came back in the summer that we were going to be coming back in person, I thought, all right, this is great. And, you know, I wanted to make a video to kind of celebrate that. And I thought, I've got an idea that my admin in the school has been getting emails left and right, just like, you know, everybody should be asking questions, do students wear masks? How many times do they have to sanitize? Um, do they have to stay in a certain area in school where they're not around other students? So I made this video back in the summer and it got a lot of hits. I did a PE news conference and I, you know, anytime I make a video and I drop the green screen down, I, did, I have a ball with it. I put the school's background in for the green screen and I had some microphones in front of me and it was just, you know, it was my wife in the room with me sitting in different spots and changing her voice, asking questions that would probably have been emailed to the admin throughout this time. So I'll let you go ahead and take a look at this. This is only just a partial clip of it. If you're wanting to watch the full version, it's going to be uh, on my YouTube channel. As long as all right, good morning. Glad you can all come out to this special press conference. I have some breaking news. Just like Michael Jordan said back in 1995 when he joined back with the Chicago Bulls, I'm going to modify the phrase just a little bit. PE is back. Starting on August 26th, we'll be back in session with students. I thought I'd come and see if anybody had any questions to ask. Uh, as long as it's one. Yeah, you in the back. After COVID hit, what did you do with the last few months of school? That's a good question. When we had to start doing online learning, I made lessons for students to do every day. First started out with the choice board where they could pick anything they wanted on the list. And then for the rest of the time, I made a different game every day for them to be able to use at home. Using home equipment, substituting for things that might not have had on the list, but it worked out well. Everybody liked it, became a big hit. Myself, I stayed home a lot. I worked out, I went to Walmart, tried to stay as safe as possible I could. Next question. As long as it's one. Right in the front. Did you get a haircut? Not since March, no. That's a good question. Any other questions? Great. Far back over there. Did you trim your beard? Next question. Hey, well, can I get school related <laughs> questions? In the corner, all in the side. What can we expect with PE this year? That's a great question. I'm glad it's school related. Thank you. PE is going to look a little bit different this year, but we're still going to have a lot of fun. Hands will be sanitized before class, and when leaving class, we got to make sure that we are clean. There will be assigned paw prints on the floor for each student to stand in when they come into PE. So it's effective, it's you know informative for parents, and it's funny. Uh, you know, trying to have just a little bit of laughter in this. It seems like uh, since this uh, pandemic has happened, there's not been much laughter going on. So it's really good to you know kind of make something that's going to help a lot of people out, but kind of make them laugh inside. And this video was really helpful for uh, people, parents who seen it on our Facebook was commenting and saying it was uh, really well done. All right, so uh, social distancing. Uh, this, this was a big term that was used for this year for a phrase. Uh, you know, a lot of phrases came out over the summer for schools uh, during reentry. And this is one of the big ones. You know, others might say physical distancing. I've used that before. You know, the rule is students seem to be six feet uh, from each other. Students would need to wear masks uh, if they're in PE. But, you know, I wanted them to be able to take a break. I bought these paw prints uh, from Oriental Trading. And 
you know, these have turned out to be wonders. I put them in seven by seven grids for the students. Uh, when we use these, they're able to take their masks off if we're using the projector for things. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of neat ideas that came out on social media to meet the requirements that Shape America's guidelines have with what they've had that came out back in the summer. So make sure that you check out some of those uh, ideas as it's been pretty neat you know people have made boxes you know if they're outside they've made lines on the fields or on the blacktop there's a lot of neat things that's going on um mask up is a big thing you know if you're back in person how's the mask situation going for you do you let your students take them off during a certain time i was kind of worried at first but uh, you can kind of tell when you know August came around; it had been in effect for a while that parents have probably made their uh, children wear the masks when they're in public, so it wasn't really much of a bother. The biggest part was just myself getting used to teaching with it on for almost eight hours a day. Um, we let ours take our masks off, like I said, when they're on their paw prints, and you know they feel relieved when they're there. If we're outside and we're in a pretty good distance we'll let them take them off and that goes to my next question do you let them take them off if you know you're in person and you take them outside uh, with some of our activities that we've done you know if we're outside no matter what if they're you know really close to each other i still have them keep them on just for you know to be safe and you know what about teaching in the classroom classroom teachers were you know told to design their classrooms to where their desks were at least six feet from each other and they're not going to be touching anything else they have their own set of you know pencils paper you know their own little box for things to use so do you have them wear the masks that are in the classroom with them if you're teaching PE in the classroom you know what kind of different situations do you have for that a uh, certain time All right, the no equipment thing. This was kind of funny. I put caution tape on our equipment door uh, before school had got started, and everybody thought something was wrong. I was like, no, we, I just I don't want people in there messing around with stuff because you're going to have people probably touching things, and then I won't know what needs to be sanitized, and, you know, it's it doesn't need to happen. So what is your equipment situation? Uh, are you limited, or are you uh, – a school that is not allowed to you know everyone's different with mine I never really got the word on if it was little or none you know my whole goal in the beginning of this was gonna be none and then shape came out with the guidelines saying well students in a group of two can share a piece of equipment um, what I did was I made tubs for students that come in and when they're done I'll sanitize them for the next group um, you know, not much equipment's been used, just a little bit to kind of keep it somewhat normal. Uh, does each student have their own equipment? Like I said with the tubs, it's a great idea. If you have enough equipment, you probably need to separate them in the tubs. And that helps them out because you're kind of getting back to what PE used to be. Which takes me to the next thing. How do we make a curriculum for a subject that uses equipment nearly all the time? That was my biggest problem was I looked at my scope and sequence and thought, okay, so well, I'm not using equipment at all, or what do I need to do? I mean, I had to really go through and change all my team activities into individual activities to try to keep it normal. The students are noticing things that they did from last year has been modified a little bit just to help them fit the needs uh, for PE this year. And this goes into the, the sanitizing thing. You know, when do students sanitize their hands for you? Uh, mine's before class and after class. Do you sanitize the equipment after use? We were given two bottles of sanitizers at the beginning of the year to wipe down uh, with a rag. You know, after students are done in class, we've got five minutes before the next class comes in to sanitize everything down. Uh, you know, our janitors have this, you know, super soaker machine they can hook on their back and spray through everything, which I've seen that on social media. If you've seen that, it's pretty neat. Uh, they stick all their equipment in a, a kiddie pool and just kind of shoot it down. You know, that'd be neat to have, but not all school districts are the same. 
So I try to get everything done before the next class comes in. And like I mentioned, we can also switch it out. We have enough equipment for the next class to come in while the other stuff dries. Do you have uh, any trouble with equipment uh, that's being sanitized? The only thing that's came up in in my side is the bean bags. Um, you know, with the cloth, it seems like it takes a while, but we have enough for to be able to switch out with classes that come in. That's the only problem that I have had with equipment. Maybe some of you have had others. I really wanted to use pedometers this year, but I was I was really afraid that if I sprayed those things, they were going to get uh, you know, they were not going to work. Uh, our plickers magnets I have not used yet. I was really kind of scared if I sprayed on those magnets that the the code will not scan on my phone. Um, that might happen maybe in the next part of the year, like in January. But it's going to be a trial and error on almost anything you use. Uh, so just kind of seeing what's going to happen with equipment that you're going to sanitize. So every year when my students come on the first day, I show them a PowerPoint of what to expect for PE. This was a new slide that was added in this year for reentry. Um, some students are not able to read just yet, kindergarten, some of first grade. So I put GIFs and pictures up to kind of give them an idea. You know, wearing their masks, it's got to be over your mouth and over the bridge of your nose. That's kind of been the little bit of issue with the masks is they have them below their nose and you know that it doesn't really count uh, making sure the hands are sanitized before and after class you know keeping their hands to self. that's been probably the biggest problem is you know, I mean students always want to touch everything um, you know, on the walls or equipment when you tell them not to or you know just kind of give their friends high fives uh, that might be the biggest uh, issue we've had this year but it's it's kind of went away after we've told them not to do it and then also if their mask is off, being able to cough until their elbow or sneeze, which has been a, a rule for a long time, which they knew all of this going into it for this year. All right, so SD and PE, social distancing and PE. The next couple of slides I'm going to show you, uh, we've done in the past two and a half months. And, you know, I, this is going to show you the thought process I went to for putting it all together. I don't have a lot of time to show you all of them, but I'm going to show you some of the popular ones that we've done. All right, so with my lessons, I make lesson visuals. It has the title, uh, the equipment, the setup, the activity, and how you can enrich it and modify it for students. It also has a diagram of what the layout should look like. And also, if anybody says, well, this is not connected to PE, they can look down here at the bottom and say, oh, there's the standards. So each standard is going to be you know, put on these lesson visuals that's connected with the lesson. The first one we did was shoe streams. I want to start very light with no equipment. So I thought, well, how can I do this? What about having students use their own shoes? It's their shoes. Why not? Why shouldn't this work? Turned out to be a big hit. Um, having students walk from one side of the floor to the other by balancing on top of their shoes and not touching the floor. They loved it. Big challenge though. Big challenge. A lot of students uh, you know, wanted to turn it into a race and they figured out, well, <laughs> they can't go as fast as what they want. So some of them fell off and they only have two shoes. So the first shoe they're on, they're going to have to go behind them and grab the other one to put in front. And if they, my rule was if they touch the floor, they have to start all over. So students really did like this. They really did. Um, and the feedback I got from people, they, their kids loved it as well. So uh, here is a video of my students doing this on the first day of school.
And as you can tell, there was a couple of them that fell off. Uh, you know, they wanted to be the fastest because there's so much competition in the second grade, as you've seen, of wanting to be the best. And, you know, just just by using their own shoes and no equipment besides the ones that were marking where to go and where to end. It turned out to just be a hit with them. The next one I did was dot to dot. Uh, yes, the old worksheet we used to do when we were little by drawing a line to connect dot to the next dot. Um, I decided to add just a little bit of equipment in here. I took a lot of poly spots. I spread them out all through the floor and I gave each student a jump rope for them to have. And it was very simple. Start on one dot, throw the rope out, walk the rope, get to the next dot and make their way to the other side of the floor. Again, another floor is lava th uh, thing that turned into just a, a big hit. I know a guy on Twitter took the shoe streams lesson and mixed it in with the dots of dot and had them use their shoes to make their move down to the next dot. It turned out to be another hit. This one got published in the Games Gazette, um, the newest magazine that came out uh, for uh, teachers to use uh, during the COVID times for their classroom with limited or no activity. Um, and here is a video of my kindergarten student doing it. Using different uh, pathways to get through the floor, a kindergarten did very well with that, very well. The next one I did was called Footloose. I decided that I was going to go live uh, for my PE class. Never done this before. Thought this would be kind of neat and new. Um, you know, during the whole COVID time, this would give other teachers to see what it was like in an actual PE class with students you know having the masks on and doing certain things we did footloose footloose was a game where everybody had a hula hoop they had their own shoe at the end of their toes they had to flip their shoe to land inside of the hula hoop if they did they got to advance their hoop down and their goal was to get it to the wall first um, this was so much fun we had a lot of views and a lot of positive feedback on this for just going live and trying something different, uh, you know, in the PE world. This was my first grade class doing this. I had to get in on it because it was just so much fun. If you heard the student scream in the background, I did it, and the joys of laughter of them going through this, I, you know, that's what really you know, touched me as an educator, thinking, okay, I've, I'm doing something that they're liking. Even in this world of what's going on, you can still uh, create your subject to where students are going to love what they're doing. So that really, you know, it really hit home uh, a lot on that lesson. And like I said, going live was something different and uh, it was just such a blast to do last year um we were doing a, a lesson with pool noodles and i had preschool for 20 minutes uh every third day and i did not have anything laid out for them to do so with the noodles i had them out already for the previous class so I thought, well, you know what, I just kind of, you know, they're usually pretty wound up. They have a lot of energy. I was like, well, I'll help their teacher out and I'll just, you know, put the noodles on the ground and I'll have this jump over them. And I videotaped this and I put this up on Twitter. Uh, all it was was just a kind of a simple run and jump thing. This went crazy online. P 
people love this. Now, bear in mind, this was last year. Now, <laughs> if you think about this, we're in this situation now where we can't really, you know, some can't touch anything at all for equipment. <clears throat> so I decided, you know, I'll make my lesson visual for it and show people. Well, the centipede took off. Um, I did not look at social media for a while after I put it up. I went with my daughter to go get her cheerleading picture. And I, you know, it took a couple hours and I did not check social media until I got done. <clears throat> I had just several, and I mean several messages and several notifications about, holy cow, look at this. Do you need to try this? You know, people tagging their friends on Facebook saying, try this, try this, try this. All this was, was four, four columns of students starting at one spot on a cone jumping running jumping running jumping all the way through until they got to the end and i just called it the centipede so the centipede course turned out to be massive uh you know like i said last year it was big this year it was bigger for the situation that we're in i had students do it for three rounds um, they were tired by the second round but here's what my second grade class Last looked like doing it this year. The only thing that I would maybe recommend for a change, now notice students were wearing their masks, but when they are lined up over on the line over here, you could maybe spread them out six feet apart or as, as far as you can on that. They were kind of bunched up, but my rule was they needed to be at least three or four noodles uh, over before the next person went. So that would help out with spacing just a little bit because once they got going, that line dwindled very quickly. All right, so let's go over some quick projector activities. You know, do you have one for your class? You know, the thing that kind of crossed my mind was this year, oh man, we're going to do a lot of projector activities. In the past, I have, but I figured there's going to be more since students weren't really allowed to do equipment. You know, there's a lot of options you can use for physical activity for these projectors. You know, and I'll just give you a little bit of a tidbit. If you can make your own activity and, you know, show students, even put it up on YouTube, you are going to be a legend to them. You know, I remember the first time I'd show students a video and they said, oh my gosh, that's coach, that's coach. You know, they think you are a superstar to them. We did a couple activities this year so far with the projector. I made one back in the summer called Bubble Bust. It's very simple. I'm on PowerPoint. I created white bubbles popping up and students started on their paw prints and wherever it is they seen the bubble come, they had to jump from that paw print to the bubble and pop it and then come back. Um, this turned out to be another hit uh, for teachers to use. Like I said, very simple for students to follow along and uh, pop the bubbles when they come up. So this was a very big uh, one for students. Every class loved it for this year at the beginning. Now, this is a funny uh, story. I seen this pop up from a YouTube channel, uh, P.E. Bowman. Uh, he has a lot of videos with his kids. Uh, being involved in it and if you have not checked out his youtube you know there's a lot of them turns out uh p bowman did not have a twitter account so when people were using this video they would you know 
they would put at P.E. Bowman, which was technically another guy. So he was getting he was getting the credit and he had nothing to do with P.E. He said that he even hated P.E. when he was in school, but felt really <laughs> he was he was happy. He was getting all these compliments. Um, Bowman did create uh, his own Twitter finally after all the recognition that he did. We did balloon pop. Um, this video has to be one of the most, at least top three on my list of students being active and watching this. I did it with them. It was a blast to do. So this is was uh, our students doing balloon pop. So many different levels for them to go through and working their hands and feet with coordination. Uh, props go out to Pee Wee uh, uh, Bowman for his work on all this. I, it's, it was amazing. All the videos he has up on there is just phenomenal. All right, so let's to the at home PE section. So did you panic at the beginning of this in the spring? You were told to keep, you know, do your lessons at home. Students were going to be at home. If you're still in virtual, has it gotten better now? What type of apps do you use for your students at home? We are a seesaw school. We got a subscription during the summer. I know a lot of people are on Flipgrid. I was originally going to do Flipgrid at the beginning, and then we went to seesaw, so I made the change. Uh, the word Zoom has become just a... A national trend for people you know visiting their students through webcam that is uh, a very popular app that's taken off you know there's hangouts there's Google meet all kinds of different things uh, we use zoom and seesaw I know probably a lot of schools maybe use the same or on different situations how do you do your grading for your at-home PE I've heard of some schools being passed or fail I've also heard of some schools where if the student logs in, they automatically pass. It's it's different for everybody, which – and you kind of think about it. Well, that that's not really fair for the students in school because if they're struggling and the ones that are at home virtually just log in, they pass. Um, it all depends on how your school district has it set up. With us, we do have – uh, the typical uh, rubric of 4321 for grading, when you send out the seesaw lessons, you can add in the skills and grade them when they send it in to you. And again, not enough time to show you all the ones I made for back in the spring, which was about 39 of them. But let's take a look at some of the popular ones that uh, people liked over the spring. This was my uh, first lesson I sent out. To students called it couch island again it's the same layout as the other one equipment setup activity enrichment modification sanders are at the bottom all i did was i thought now this was before i believe flora's lava even came out so i was maybe kind of hoping for a little bit of the netflix pension now nah, <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding my my daughter said something about well daddy this is what you no, no it's you know it's it's an idea that could be thrown around any different way um, take pillows take stuffed animals throw them all on the floor start from one side of the house to lead to the couch the videos and pictures I got from people around the world doing this it, it made me smile and I thought you know when this became a hit this is something I could do for a couple months to kind of keep me motivated to want to uh, you know I made one every single day for the past weeks that we had left of school so it was 39 so it was about eight or nine weeks left of school i made one every single day and it was motivation of watching people sending me pictures and videos in of them their students or their own children doing these lessons
This one turned out to be a really big hit. And here is a video of some of my students for virtual this year doing it. And there is some pictures also as other students doing it. <laughs> Okay, go to the next one. The joy and laughter of students doing something that you created, it is a big deal. Um, you know, as educators, we always strive for perfection, although it is very hard, but I think creating a lesson that students like and enjoy you know they're learning and, and they're having fun is it's big in an educator's world the next one we did was sock hop i don't know how i got this idea in all honesty what i did was when this when the covid first hit was about every afternoon i would go on a run and i'd take a break at a park bench and i kind of be you know throwing things in my mind of what i could do because you know my goal was to make one every day and you know i'd go in my garage and look around and think well you know people could do this they if they have this and stuff and then i thought well, what about socks i thought what if we throw socks out on a floor or on the grass and one of my professors from college was very big on fine motor control and i had a buddy uh, back in college that did a lesson with fine motor control in the feet so not the hands but the feet your toes doing pinches and grabs and clinch and i thought well what if we do hopping and we'll call it a sock hop right off the bat it turned out to be a hit uh, pe teachers from different states sent me videos of them and their children doing this not their students in class but them in may in their front yard spreading all their socks out on the grass and picking them up and hopping back to drop them off, competing against family members. And this was a video that I got from one of my virtual students, and she was competing against her brother, and then the picture on the side is from one back in the spring. Ready, set, go. You happen to drop your sock you just pick it up where you're at with your toes and you continue going it's it's amazing the feedback i've gotten for the seesaw app of you know all the lessons that i've sent you know and the thing that kind of made me sad a little bit was back when you know we were second home and cover said i didn't get really many lessons from students which i know they were probably thinking well it, how are we going to send it in and you know it was, it was a different situation and now that we have seesaw i can get results from students and it is very it's very touching to see all these videos and pictures coming in you know every day and parents saying how much they like them so much um the parachute <laughs> this one <laughs> this one i like the most uh, Jason Leach, teacher down in Texas, uh, he had one. He is with the Open. Uh, Open is very popular for all their PE activities. He had one called Chew Fly. So he took a shoe and he put it in a, in a plastic bag and he threw it and they landed on towels. You know, they got certain points. And I told him, I said, do you give me permission to modify this a little bit? And he goes, yeah, that's fine. So I thought, well, what if... I take the bag and I tie it around the laces and I call it a parachute. And I thought that name's just, that name's killing it right now. So we did kind of what they had set up, towels in front of each other. Originally his idea had towels scattered all over the yard. I made two lines. So a line of five for each player and your job was to throw your parachute to land on a towel and collect it and the first person who collected all their towels and win. Uh, you know, I've watched Jason Leach since I first started Twitter back around 2015 and I've always done my activities, uh, you know, with my students from what he has. So things he puts up online, I will show my students. 
and then some of these new things like he did dot to dot with his students and he sent me a message over twitter saying you know here's pictures and he, he put up online here's pictures of my students doing your activity and you have no idea how much of a, a pause i took when i seen that because wow this is a person that i've watched for years and i do his activities with my students now he's doing my activity with his students it just it, it, it just it really it was awesome just to see that and i even told him that on a comment and um yeah it's this turned out to be a really big uh game for students now that they're doing it for uh this year here was a video that my students did for this year on um, the picture is a right of a guy and his friend up in canada who played the game just for fun because they said it was neat so <laughs> here's a picture of my students playing Go get your parachute and we keep got, doing it. We got half of it, Grandma. We gotta keep doing it till we can get it all the way on there. <laughs> Watching those shoes fly, it was the neatest thing. I did that with students for this year for in person. Um, even though the grass was wet, it, it was a lot of fun just to watch it. You know, I took my shoe off as well and tied it and we went through a lot of plastic bags but you know just them having fun and hearing the sounds of enjoyment cool um planko was a unusual thing um montgomery pe uh, a couple years ago made plinko on the hill outside he took noodles and took a stability ball and roll it down the hill and i thought well man i I bet I can make one for at home. So I thought, well, how am I going to do this? You know, let's take a ball. If they don't have a ball, two socks, roll them together, roll them down their stairs and play Pinko. They can put books. They can put DVDs, movies, something to block. And at the bottom, they can put little crates. And they can tell them how many points are in there. And eventually, people started adding, like, maybe exercises they had to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I tagged the prices right on one of the tweets I put out when I had this assigned for uh, the virtual field day. They loved it. Uh, it was a, a smash hit. This might have been the best one that I did for at home PE back in the spring. We had so many videos. There were so many to pick from. Um, I'm going to do a video of my students playing it at home for this year. The pictures on the right is a dad competing against his son. As you can tell, the son is kind of mad he doesn't get his chance to, <laughs> to roll because dad's doing it right now. Um, the stairs, people had the decks from outside. It was just, it was unbelievable, the response. Well, 30 points. Good job. Good. 30 points again. <laughs> Go. That's the throw. Oh, sorry. See, they even told her I was a throw and not a roll. If I had enough time to show all the videos, I would. Uh, it was just unbelievable what I got back from that. Okay, so your house, your choice. This was another popular thing that I did. You know, people were throwing out ideas and when COVID first hit uh, of having students do things and they were giving them options, you know, because students like to have choices. Mine was a little bit different. Um, this was technically the first thing I sent out before all the lessons. I did a week saying with Monday through Friday, but instead of giving them two choices, I gave them four. So this technically went for four weeks. So they would pick one thing for Monday and then mark it out. Next thing for Tuesday, they mark it out all the way to Friday. And then the weekend, you know, I gave them kind of a little bit of free play of free choice to do something. They would click on these links and it would take them to videos, maybe on YouTube, some of the lessons that I did. Also, uh, the ones in black would basically tell them, you know, you know, play outside for 30 minutes or, uh, you know, create your own obstacle course, jump rope for 20 minutes. 
and every time they did this it they would knock a choice out so this hit four weeks because we were told you know we were going to come back maybe in a certain time and it got set up this got so popular you know i sent out the free thing of a template for it and then i decided well i'll make different colors for students because we put our school logo up in here and we went with the school colors red and black and then i made it to where people could edit it to um, add their own words in there and mascots and this became uh, quite a smash hit for everybody uh field day this year was uh a little bit different i if you know me i am a uh number one supporter of field day i usually go all out so i about cried this year and when they said you know we're not going to do we won't be in school for field day and you know i'm usually outside for nine hours throughout the night setting it up and this was my quickest time setting it up i just looked outside and said i'm done go in the backyard at home so we did a virtual field day this was very different um i originally had the the plan for disney i did not want to do disney through the computer because i had so many things to do so i quickly changed the theme and went with camp field day students are home with their families this will be a camp field day theme i sent out videos throughout the day I had them create their own field day instead of me doing it. They had these blank lesson plans that came to them where they got to make their own games and submit it to me. They told me what equipment they wanted, what rules they wanted, and this is an example of one of the videos they got throughout the day. All right, students, we're about halfway through the day. Now, what you need to do is take a little bit of a break, go eat you some lunch, get hydrated, and then come back out and enjoy some more fun. I'm going to go take a jump in the river and kind of cool off a little bit. Enjoy the rest of your day. Just kind of giving them the idea of, you know, I'm, I'm still here. You know, I did a <laughs> morning announcements video. I did the mess hall, which was that one, and then I did the closing ceremonies. Students loved it. I got a lot of feedback on this as well. Uh, people laughing at the, you know, the videos doing the green screen as well. But you know, it was not the same, but it it did its job. So hopefully we get an in-person field day this year. For a finale, no matter the type of PE you're teaching for this year, you can still be creative in many ways. You're a fantastic teacher, and we're gonna make it through this, no matter how long it takes. There are tons and tons of resources on the internet for assistance. And if you need some help with things, you know, take a look at my website, email me. I know it seems that we are unappreciated as teachers sometimes. But, you know, your students love and care for you. <laughs> it might not seem like it, you know, but they do. No matter how long this, you know, this new normal is going to take place you need to do it for them and that is the way that i have taken this whole thing is i want to be able to leave my mark saying you know no matter the consequence of how this all went down i was still there to support them and give them the best pe that i could so just remember that they love you and they if you have them in session for person they love seeing you if it's virtual and you do meetings with them they love seeing you a big part of their life some resources if you're needing them sns worldwide social distancing blog that i did i did an at-home pe blog back in the spring uh, pe bowman's youtube website right there my twitter handle my website and then the shape america school reentry uh you guideline recommendations that long list of things you need to go over to make sure you're properly prepared for reentry. I appreciate you having me uh, take this time to show you some things that we've done. I'm hoping that you can do some of these things with your students, and I would love to hear some feedback from you. So if you could send me some things that you thought were good, some things that maybe need to be worked on, I would appreciate it. Hope you have the great rest of your day and that you stay safe. Goodbye.